Okay, so what we have here is the Mac desktop, and this is is different from the Windows environment, but it still has a lot of similarities. So when you get comfortable with Windows, you can actually take away some of the things you learn from Windows and apply it here in the Mac world. Uh, but some things do differ. We'll start at the bottom. This bottom area is called our dock. It's essentially got a lot of the shortcut apps that we typically use quite often. We can add and remove stuff. Now, I think for you guys, you don't have the applications uh, a folder here, and you'll have to bring that in. And I'll show you how to bring that in momentarily, right? But otherwise, the application folders has a list of all the applications that I want to be able to access, almost like the start menu from Windows. So it was kind of strange that in your Macs, they, they took that out. Uh, or they didn't add it in the first place. You have different views for how you might view this. Oh, and see, I just launched an application as well. So I'm just going to close that. And if you right click, you can. Oh, by the way, right clicking is actually a two finger click on the trackpad. So if you don't have a mouse, you do two fingers on the trackpad, press down on it, let it click, and you'll have your right click. And so you can do like a list, a fan, or whatever option or approach you want to do for, for this. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off here on the side with Finder. This little smiley face at the extreme left. The next to it is, before I even do that, there's this thing called Launchpad. So if I click on that, it has all my, all my apps here. I can swipe by doing a two-finger swipe to the left, right? And so it brings over all my applications. So I actually have all my applications here as well that I can, I can do too. But... I'm going to click again, get it to disappear, and I'm going to click on Finder. And if it's already open, it'll it'll launch a uh, it'll it'll if it's already open, it'll just it'll just maximize the one you already have open. If you want to open a second Finder, you right click or you two finger click on Finder and say New Finder Window, and it'll open the second one for you. So sometimes you may want multiple windows. Now Finder is basically your Windows Explorer. So you're probably accustomed to Windows Explorer so you can navigate your files, copy, paste, delete, and so on uh, for different files. It's the same approach here in the Mac environment as well. Now, what you'll see here is that we have different viewing options up here. So we have this typical icon approach. You have a list approach as well. You have a, an expanded list approach where you can actually see a hierarchy like past folders you've been to and whatnot. So you see a whole hierarchy or a chain of it. And then this last one is actually a that you'd see in, in the in in a music app essentially. Right? I typically go with this approach. The the this expanded list approach so I can see the past folders and whatnot. On the side you'll also see your any any drives you have mounted or any, any USB drives, you'll see them here listed, as well as your most common places to go. Now, if you want to see your applications listed here, basically click on the applications over here and drag it. If you drag it, so yeah, so essentially you just drag it and you would place it here. Now, up here at the top, before we go further, you have a bar here. And you'll notice that in Windows, every window that you have has like file, edit, and view, and window, and so on. But here, they put it stationary in one place, right at the top. You also have your system icons up here, your system tray essentially, and you know time and, and user ID and whatnot as well. Uh, and so every time you open a window, this will change. Whatever's here will change every time you click on a window. Here is just Finder. So under Finder, uh, we have different options, right? Preferences and, and whatnot. Next to it, is the Apple icon. And if I click on that, it gives me more computer related things. So about this Mac, I can sleep, restart and shut down, I can log off and whatnot. So if I look at about this Mac, you'll see characteristics, it's running Yosemite and what kind of processor, how many gigs and, and so on. But, and you can see more computer hardware related information as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to launch Xcode. Now before I before we do that, uh, do you guys have it installed or are you still installing? Still installing? Okay. I'll walk through Xcode at least in the meantime, and we can we can try it out at least. <coughs> well, 
But before we do, uh, let's look at let's look at this top bar again. So if I open up let's op open up the App Store, for example, and it's launching and it loads the App Store. Notice the top bar has changed now. Now it tells me it's the App Store that's brought to the forefront and any options related to the App Store. So edit, store, window, help, and whatnot. Now if I click back on Finder, the options change back, right? So whatever window is in focus, this changes to be the options for that, all right? So if you ever want to look for something to do with respect to whatever particular program you're running, make sure that, that window is in focus, all right? And then you'll see your options up here. Okay, so so that's how you know how which which program is in the forefront and running, and and can actually be worked on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch Xcode. We should see a welcome window called welcome, which basically says welcome to Xcode. If you have any past projects open, it'll be listed here. But we're going to go ahead and create a new project. And it'll give us an option of what kind of project we want to build. And we have here iOS, we have watchOS, tvOS, and OSX. Start from the bottom, so OSX is basically a Mac app. If you want to build a Mac app, you would basically go through the options here. We're not going to do that. TVOS for a TV app for Apple TV. WatchOS is an application for the watch. And of course, iOS is for the phone and iPad. So making sure that application is highlighted. We'll always have application highlighted here for iOS. We're going to choose single view application. Now there's other options here. There's master detail, there's page base, there's tab base and game. They all pre-populate the project with extra stuff to help you start out sooner with those particular styles of app. We're going to always stick to single view because we're going to build stuff from scratch and our projects here in this course will be very basic anyway. So I'm going to choose single view application and hit next and I give the project a name. So the application, I'm just going to call it uh, test for lack of a better name. Organization name can be whatever you want. The organization identifier is typic is usually important, but for our case, because we're not publishing to the App Store, it's meaningless. But you should have something here. The organization identifier uh, basically states that this is the organization that is going to publish this app. And if you look here under bundle identifier, this is the identifier that must always be unique in the App Store. So no other app in the App Store out of the millions of apps can have the same bundle identifier as yours. So that's why you typically go with com.yourcompanyname.yourappname uh, because assume that your, your company name won't be duplicated anywhere else or you may have to change it up and use a consistent uh, company name here to be able to ensure that you have things that are different from other people in the world. Right? But Essentially, these are the basic settings for thinking ahead to publishing to the App Store. Language will use is Objective-C. You can change it to Swift when you get into Swift. And device, universal. So you have the option to make it purely phone or purely iPad. Uh, we're going to stick to universal. The idea is that back in the day, you used to have the option to make a separate project for iPhone and a separate project for iPad. Of course, you still have that option. But now they go with the universal approach because it's one code base for two different devices. As opposed to creating two separate code bases for two different devices, the main challenge now is getting your screens and getting your images to display properly on the different devices. And that developers have chosen as an option over having two separate code bases, be able to manage that. So we'll, we'll choose universal. We'll leave these three options unchecked, so core data, we're not going to use any core data, we're not going to do any unit tests, and we're not going to do any UI tests. We'll just hit next, and next it will ask us to place it somewhere. So I'm going to find a home for this. So this will be under here. I'm going to create a new folder for you guys. I'm going to call you guys Davis2. And new folder here, I'm going to call this week two. 
I'm going to place this project here. Well, it also said there was a checkbox for Git repositories. You can leave that unchecked. We're not going to deal with Git as well in this course. That's something you can try on your own time. But Git repositories are useful for code revisioning or source code protection and whatnot. But here, it, here is the entire project now. So this is Xcode in it in a nutshell. There are different windows or different sections of Xcode, and if you're missing anything here, you can simply go to the top corner and hide or unhide what you need. So like if I start from the extreme right button that hides and unhides this sidebar here. If I go to the extreme left here, hides and unhides that. And the bottom one is missing, so I can unhide the bottom one. Now I'll tell you exactly what each of these things does. So this essentially is my project navigator. Navigate different projects. Uh, sorry, different files from the projects. I can see any error messages that come up. So uh, there's different options up here. I can check out any compile errors that come up. I can search the entire project for anything here. And I can list out my breakpoints. Any breakpoints here, I can turn them on or off and whatnot. There's a bunch of different options here, but we'll stick to heavily using it for project navigation, for searching, and for seeing any uh, errors that we have in compilation, as well as warnings. Now, here in the middle, we ha typically have our code, but right now, if we highlight the actual project name itself, it shows me project properties and compile properties, so any build properties as well. Right now, it's showing me what version it is. Um, I can see you know, what device, so is it universal? I can switch it back to iPhone or iPad only. I can tell if, I, if it's portrait or landscape left, right. And if I want to add any extra libraries or frameworks into here, I can go ahead and do so. So I can click on the plus sign here can choose different frameworks that I want to add in. Kind of like with Java where, you know, you wanted to bring in a different uh, different package, you had to import it, right? Here, you can simply do it by ch checking it here and, uh, and adding it. You can also bring in external ones by hitting add other. So if I download something off the internet that I want to bring in, I can bring in as well. So I'm going to cancel this. We're not going to bring anything in today. We're going to jump into the files that have been generated for us here. We're going to start off with the first two. So appdelegate.h and appdelegate.m. This object, appdelegate, so the header file looks very similar to the header file for our view controller and for any of the objects we've created thus far in the course. The purpose of appdelegate itself is to be a manager object for the lifecycle of the app. Next week, we'll get into what the lifecycle of the app is all about. But to suffice to say, each app has a different has different states. So it could be running, it could be minimized, it could be about to close, you know, different options here. It could be launching. And there's different methods here, very common methods that are used in app management. So the first one is did finish launching with options. In this course, we'll basically use this method. And the purpose of this method is I like to think of it as the constructor for the app itself, where when you're launching the app for the first time, then you can have some default code execute for you. And so what you want is maybe you want to connect to a database. Maybe you want to connect to Game Center and log in your player. Maybe you want to open up uh, a SQLite database and, and load up some default settings. Right, but maybe maybe you want to do some different things just to have it ready to go for your user when they when they get to the home page. So you can do that here in did finish launching. You can run all that default code that you want to run. The next, there's other ones here that uh, relate to resign active, uh, enter background. Right, so if I'm if I hit the home button and the app goes in the background, like maybe for example I want to turn off sound, right, or I want to stop streaming music or something. I can I can specify that code here in this method. Enter foreground. Maybe I'm returning back to the foreground, right, from being minimized. Maybe I want to resume streaming. Music, I can do that here. Will terminate. So when the app's about to shut down, maybe there's something you want to do, like disconnect from a database, right? So you have that option to add that code here as well. So app delegates we'll get more into later in the course, but this is just a, a bit of a background teaser on what the app delegate is all about. What we care about is viewcontroller.h and viewcontroller.m. So 
we have here view control dot h dot and dot m. This is the support object for our view. What I'll do is I'll jump into main storyboard and jump back to this object. So main storyboard is basically the file that houses all of the screens that we're going to have for our app. It used to be that you had to have separate files for each screen. Now we have one big file for all the screens in our app and we join them together in a way that tells us we're going to go from this screen to that screen to the other screen uh, through certain buttons or whatnot. So we're looking here at is our, our entire app laid out visually. What we're going to do here is we're going to configure the screen first and then we'll investigate the view controller object in greater detail after. So the first thing to see here is that we have a square here. This is basically our screen. When it is first created, it's just a generic screen. And what I like to do is I like to convert it into a specific screen for a specific device. And throughout this course, I'm going to stick to iPhone 5 as, as the screen of choice because it fits nicely onto this screen and, and I'm able to load it a bit faster than iPhone 6. So what I'm going to do is I want to configure the properties for the view controller. So I click on the word view controller. I see three different icons that come up. We'll go through what these icons are throughout the course. But for now, uh, the yellow circle represents the view controller object itself. So if I look here and I see view controller.hnm, that's what I'm referring to. So this is the visual representation of view controller. Okay. And when I click on this, I can see its properties appear here. So different types of properties. And what I'm going to care about today is the fourth option here at the top, which is the attributes inspector. And it has the different attributes for this particular screen. And if I click on size, I'm going to change it to iPhone 4 inch. iPhone 4 inch is the size of the iPhone 5 screen. The other sizes are iPhone 6, iPhone 6 plus, iPhone 3. You could have specified the iPad as well different iPad screen sizes, and so on. So that's the one thing I'm going to specify. The other thing is orientation. I can change it to be portrait or landscape. I'm going to keep it as inferred. We're going to switch it to portrait. I'm just going to do a portrait app today. And there's other options here to look at. We'll look at these throughout the course. But what we're going to do today is we're going to drag two items onto the screen. So you'll see here on the side you have different options. Now you probably have this open by default and you want to make sure that you have the third option open because the third option is basically the palette of different options available to us to drag onto the screen. The other ones relate to maybe code or objects or whatnot. Uh, but I can scroll down and I can see the different things available at my disposal. So label, button, segmented control, text box, slider, and so on, right? Different options available in my control. I, or better yet, I can search. I have a little search bar down here. I can search for label. And it'll bring up label. And if I want to bring this label onto my screen, I just simply drag a label onto the screen. And notice that where I dragged it, it actually let go, unlike Android. In Android, you drag something to the screen, and, it, and Android basically decides where it goes, right? because of the whole Java layouting system, right? Based on linear layout, relative layouts, uh, and so on. So it, you, know, you don't really have that option of where you, can, where you want to put it specifically. But unlike, that, unlike in iPhone and in Xcode, wherever we put it is where it's going to go. Okay, so that's, that's the nice thing about it. And if I want to be very precise about where this label goes, I can click on the fifth option here. This is the size ins inspector. And I can change the XY location. I can change the width and the height to be very precise. This is useful for when you have like maybe four or five labels and you want to put them in a grid format so they're nice and nicely laid out, the same size and whatnot. So you could actually hard code those values yourself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it and resize it myself. And I'm going to go back to the fourth option and change the properties of this label. So I'm going to say, hello world. And I'll change it to be centered. 
I can change the font. We'll get into fonts next with our next step. We'll play around with the font coloring and, and stuff like that next next class when we when we get into the next app. But for now, hello world is sufficient. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a button. So I'm gonna search for button. And I have a button right here. I'm gonna drag this on. And notice that there's guide bars to help me center things. I'm going to change the center. I'm going to change the text to be let's go. All right, so it's going to say let's go. So now I have a label and I have a button. And notice that I'm, I'm well, for now, I'm going to leave this this uh, storyboard. I'm, I'm done with it and I want to save it. So I can go because this is the this is the window that is maximized right now or in the forefront. I can see that Xcode is. And I can see its options for Xcode up here. I can either go File Save, or I can do Command S. So Command S is the same as Control S in the world Windows world. When you do Control S, you're saving a file. Just like other things in Windows world, Control X to cut, Control uh, V to paste, Control C to copy. Here in the Mac world, it's Command X, Command C, and Command V. All right, so you basically just replace the word Control with Command. You still have a Control button here, but you're using Command all the time now in Mac. So I did a, control, a Command S to save, and now I'm going to go over to the View Controller object and make uh, make this window useful. In fact, even before that, we can go ahead and try launching it if we want. So if I go here, I can see that right now I have the iPhone 6 Plus set up to go. But I can change that to be different phone simulators. So I'm going to choose iPhone 5. If I had a device connected, I would see the name of that device up here. If I have a phone, if my phone or my iPad is connected to the computer and I'm allowed to publish to it, I, can, I would see that device here. Now, when I'm ready to run this device, I'll just hit the play button. I hit, I double clicked it by accident. That's why that window came up. This is my status bar for the progress in compiling. It says built succeeded. Now my simulator is launching, which I'll put right here. Now we're seeing the we're seeing a blank white screen, which is really what happens at this point is that it's launching the splash screen. Our splash screen is blank, so it's there's nothing really to see. And we'll talk about the splash screen in a second. And then it ends off with our home page. So we see hello world and we see let's go. And when I click on let's go, nothing happens because there's no event handler associated with it. We have hello world, which basically is the ta text that we added to the screen. So if I want to stop the app, I'll just hit the stop sign up here, and that stops the execution of the app. Now, you'll notice that there's another storyboard here called launchscreen.storyboard. Now, you'll notice that there's another storyboard here called launchscreen.storyboard. I'm just going to drag over a label here. And I'm just going to drag a label like right in the middle. In fact, I'll set the screen to be iPhone, put the label here, all right. Oops. Okay, and we'll just say uh, launching, right? So we should see the launching label pop up when we launch the app. We just completed the storyboard for our application here. And what we did was we, we dropped onto a label called Hello World with a, with a button that says Let's Go. Now our next step is to actually do something with these items. And that goes into the view controller object. So the view controller object is our support object to handle any interaction 
with the with the view. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the storyboard. We're going to start off in viewcontroller.h. And inside viewcontroller.h, we'll notice that it has all the things we talked about. So we have import uikit.h, so it's bringing in the uikit framework, any important constructs related to it. It also brings in framework.h by default as well, because that's imported into uikit.h, so all the ent entire language constructs are there. And then we're saying at interface view controller extends UI view controller. So it's basically saying that it is a child class of UI view controller. Every single view controller object we create will always be a child class of UI view controller. We're always, always going to extend from that class because it has all the support uh, methods for supporting our screen or our view. Now we have here a label. And what I want to do in this exercise is learn how to change the text on the label through the code. So we're going to create a label, a variable here, by starting off and adding an opening and closing curly. And we'll start off by saying IB outlet. And notice that it's starting to autocomplete my code for me, which is really nice. And I'll type in UI label. And I'm going to call this one star LBL text. So what we're saying here is UI label, that's our object, LBL text is our variable name, and IB outlet is telling interface builder, hey, make this variable accessible to our, our interface builder so we can join it together. And we're gonna learn how to join things together really easily. And we will do a property declaration. So just to recap, the property declaration its purpose is to essentially define the function prototypes for the getters and setters of our variable. So we're going to say at property, we're going to say non-atomic comma strong, and we'll basically have everything above. So IB outlet, UI label, and then star LBL text. Now we'll get deeper into this discussion of property with non-atomic and strong. We'll get deeper into this discussion of property, non-atomic and strong further in the course in the next couple of weeks. We'll get into deeper talk about it because there's, there's actually special reason for why we're using these words here. So we have our property declaration and it is basically defining a get for LBL text and a set for LBL text. So that's the whole purpose of property here. The declaration of it inside the curly brackets is the actual class variable, which we may refer to at any time. And at this point, we are done with the header file for now. We'll come back to it in a moment for something else, but for now we're done with it. So I'm do a command S to save this header file. And I'll move over to the M file. So viewcontroller.m. And inside of it, we have a method called viewDidLoad. viewDidLoad is a special method that you'll see over and over again. I like to think of this as the constructor for the screen. So this method, anytime we launch the screen, will automatically execute this method. So if there's any special uh, code that needs to be executed upon, at launch time, we would do that here inside view did load. Now view did load has a few sister methods that are that operate very similarly to view did load. So there's view will appear, view did appear, and so on. And the purpose of those is to really fine tune our launch sequence for this particular screen. So if we find that we want to auto load some stuff onto the screen through view did load, but we're finding it's happening too late, maybe we'll move it earlier to view will appear, right? Maybe it'll launch a little bit earlier, just so we don't, maybe don't have any screen flicker or, or some sort of scenario that comes up that just doesn't look nice. So we can really fine tune things by trying any of the view did methods. There's also methods like view did unload, which means when we leave the screen, then we'll have something happen as well. So there are sister methods for leaving the screen as well. Now, inside view did load, we're going to basically have that label change from hello world to good night. That's going to be our purpose for today. But before then, we need to define our getters and setters for the LBL text object. 
And we're going to do that by synthesizing these variables. So we're going to say at synthesize LBL text. So again, this auto generates behind the scenes our get and our set method. So unlike Java, where you actually have to type get and set, get and set, get and set, here we just say synthesize, the variable name, and the compiler takes care of the rest. Now, we could, of course, override this with our own custom get and set. If we had to have something special happen inside a get and set, we can do that ourselves. But we have synthesize at our disposal to do this for us. So now if I go inside view did load, I'm going to change the text. So I'm going to say lbl text dot text is equal to good night. Okay. And I'm, and I'm done with this file for now. So I'm going to do command S. All I'm basically saying here is at launch time for the screen, at load time for the screen, we are going to change the text that's in the label to say the words good night. So now we have the label inside our view. We have the label inside our class. The last step is to join them together. To join them together. This is a bit tricky, and yet it's the, also the very easy thing to do at the same time once you get how to do this process. When you don't get it at the beginning, it is a bit tricky because you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I join this thing? Is it, like I don't see what I'm looking for and, and whatnot. But once you get used to the whole process, then, then it becomes very easy to do. So we save the file. We saved our header file. We jump back to the storyboard. So main.storyboard. And we see here, hello world. Now, if I go to the last option here, the sixth option, this is our connections inspector. This lists out all different connections we can have to this particular item. And this changes for whatever I have clicked, right? change for whatever I have clicked, including our yellow circle or our view controller. Now, our view controller is the most important one here because we defined our variable inside the view controller object. So we have to highlight the view controller icon here in order to get anything view controller related to appear here. Now, we create a variable called LBL text, which is right here. You'll notice that there's these circles that are associated with it. Now, if I take that circle, I press down on my mouse, and I drag it over to the label, and I let go, it is now joined the variable to the widget itself. And that's it. Give it a run. Oh, there's launching. And it says good night. So now we have actually changed the text from hello world to good night. And that's all there is to it to getting a variable to join to a particular item on our screen. It's very simple to do once you get used to the process. Now there's one final thing we'll do and then we'll call it a day. So we looked at how we could join a variable to a widget, but we're going to look at now how to create an event handler and connect it to a button. And what we're going to do with this button is we're going to click on let's go and have the text change back to hello world. That's what we're going to do. So in order to do that, we're going to stop our execution. And we're going to go back to viewcontroller.m. And we're going to create an event handler. So event handlers always have the return type IB action. So I'm going to start by typing out dash and open brown bra round bracket and say IB action. And you notice that it tries to autocomplete for me. So I have here, and also I'll hit enter. I'll let it autocomplete. And we have this word selector. We have to change that to be a actual method name or event handler name we want to work with. So I'm just going to call this go do something. Its argument is sender of type ID, which is fine. We don't need that for now. Open my curly, close my curly. So I now have an opening and closing curly. Now, what I'm going to do here is change the text back. So I'm going to say LBL text dot text is equal to hello world.
and that'll be my event handler. Now I'm going to take this, put this as a function prototype in the header file. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it into my header file. Underneath the property declaration, add a semicolon to it. And save the header file. Now if I was to run this app right now, it still won't work that button still won't work because there's still one last step to do. Similar to the label, where we join the label variable to the physical label, we have to join this event handler to the button we want it to operate with. Okay, So we're going to jump back to main.storyboard and we're going to make sure that view controller is highlighted and our sixth option, the connections inspector, is active. If you look at the bottom of the list here, you should see go, go do something here. And you have a op empty circle here. If I hold it down and I start dragging, I can connect it to the button. When I let go of the button, there's a bunch of different options here. So it gets very precise about how we want the event handler to execute. From uh, touch down to touch cancel, to touch up inside, to value change. There's all kinds of different options here. I'm going to go with touch up inside. Now what this is saying, as opposed to touch down, is that is not only do we press down on the button, but we wait until we let go of the button to execute this. So I'm going to go with touch up inside. And now our event handler is connected to our button. So now we can go ahead and execute this. And we see build succeeded. We see our launch screen, we see good night. I click on let's go and it says hello world. And so now what you've seen is there's a bit of a crash course on getting an Xcode project to launch, to build, to put some stuff on a home page, to play with the launch screen and to create an event handler and to create a variable to connect to and talk to any item on the screen that we want.